Hi everyone, uh, Carl again from Self Sufficient Hub and today I wanted to share with you these. These are my notes, all my plans, everything that I've done, all the planning when I set out the gardens, where we were going to grow things, how we grow things, everything is contained in here. These are like my garden bibles and I just thought I'd spend a minute because we're coming into autumn now and through the autumn and winter is when we do a lot of our planning for next year and this is where I make all my notes but most importantly around this time of year I look back and look at what's gone well and what hasn't and I was just going to share a lot of the processes that I use with you guys and see what you think. So it's been a while since I've been in here because during the summer, obviously, it's just flat out working on the garden. But throughout the autumn and winter and to a degree in the spring, I get to spend a lot of my time thinking and planning. I've got all sorts in here. This is a really useful tool. It's basically just a list of notes and it's based on each individual area of the garden. So at the top here, we've just got the, the basic notes. And what I did is I just spent a lot of time sat in every area and conveniently, and this was unplanned, but conveniently the first thing that I brought up is actually referring to the area we're sat in now. So it's an activity that I strongly recommend that you do regardless of how big your space is. If your space is just some window boxes, this is still a worthwhile thing to do. If your space is a balcony, it's a worthwhile thing to do. And if your space is as big or bigger than ours, it's a worthwhile thing to do several times. So I've done about eight or 12 of these, something in that order. They're just a way of getting to know your space, getting to know what's working and what's not. It's a permaculture principle really is to observe. And I've just made a list for each area. So. This is the same headings that I've used for every area, every area. So location, date, weather, temperature, pH levels. So that's how I started. And in this area, so the location was picnic area slash food forest, because this is our picnic bench. The long-term view for this, over on this side, we've got this established wood that we can't or wouldn't want to do anything with. It's one of the more wild areas of the garden. Now in there, we've got our compost loo and we've got a little campsite, but that's about it. At the top end, actually, we've also got the apiary and we also have a pig arc that isn't being used, that we used for, to store wood. But other than that, it's pretty much wild and left to do whatever. There's a few paths cut through it to get to the compost loo and the camp and things like that. But other than that, it's pretty wild. And the idea is to kind of extend the wood out, but not as densely, just with the odd tree and create a food forest. This whole area stretching back is being planted entirely with edible perennials and then just over out of shot of camera. In fact, I will quickly show you. So just round here, we have our pond and a little arbor and a walnut tree and some hazel that I've planted. And the idea is that this bottom bit would almost be like a picnic area, like almost in a public park. So you can see what the long-term plan for the the area was. So I've made some notes, picnic area food forest, and the date that I did this was May 2019. Weather was dry and bright with no rain for several days. Now it's important that you note the weather. If you're gonna make these notes, if you're gonna do this activity, it's important that you note the weather because the things you might be seeing and the things you're gonna note down that you've seen, that might be relevant. Temperature, 19 degrees C. Today's low overnight was about eight degrees C and the pH level was about 7.5 throughout. I took a few readings and this is all 7.5. The next section, and it's a slightly larger section, is soil humidity slash hummus notes. Um, and for this area, largely lawn previously, good topsoil on clay subsoil, holds moisture well, maybe too well, question mark. No, we'd only been here about a year at this point. Um, wooded area largely untouched suggesting healthy established mycorrhizal fungi network and then a sunlight i've drawn a little area for a sunlight map 
So here I've drawn the area very, very crudely, showing which way was north, which way the sun was coming, and which ways are going to be shaded. So if you look at my drawing there, you'll see I've drawn where the wood is, and then I've drawn full shade, partial shade, and uh, you know just some other features of the area. You're more than welcome to use exactly the same notes I do, but obviously also you might find different ones work for you. But if you want a copy of my notes, a blank copy of my notes, all you've got to do is get in touch. My email address is in the description. There's several ways you can get in touch with me and um, I'm more than happy to send you the blank version of this. And then the next thing that I've got there is wind exposure. And I've written fairly exposed to the northeast, although some cover to the entire area because we do have these, these trees that kind of flank all this side and then the hedge running up behind me there. The next section on my list is existing plants. Large selection of native trees, comfrey around ponds, various introduced edibles, because I'd planted some things dotted around like the hazel and a few of the plants up this hedgerow here. Various introduced edible, red clover, buttercups, couch grass, etc. Now we really get into the permaculture side of things because the next two items on our list are systems to encourage and systems to discourage. So what we're looking at is what's already going on and where are we going to apply our nudging pressure to move things the way we want. So I haven't read this for over a year, so I'm reading it with you. It's all almost new to me as it is to you. So systems to encourage. Edible climbers to the north fence, self-mulching leaf litter, duck pest control and manure and aquaculture. So these are all systems that I wanted to encourage here because we've got the ponds, we were going to introduce some ducks. These are all still things I want to do, but it's not happened as fast as I would have liked. And then systems to discourage predator and pest ingress to the property at northeast boundaries. So all along this hedge line here, Although it's fenced and actually fenced with a mesh to make it pest proof, there are quite a lot of areas where we can actually see the animals are getting in and they're going to be animals that we don't necessarily want. They're going to be rabbits that are going to want to eat our edible plants or they might be foxes that are going to want to eat our chickens and things like that. So it's definitely an area that we need to keep on top of. So predator and pest ingress to the property at northeast boundary boundary wastewater overflow from ponds squirrels stripping all the nuts so we had loads of lovely walnuts on the walnut tree in our first year here and we didn't get to eat a single one of them because the squirrels got there first so that's something we definitely want to discourage and wasted water overflow from the ponds so what we want to do i've purposely situated the ponds slightly uphill from our vegetable bed so ultimately and this will be a long time because it, uh, you know it's right down the list of priorities when we get the ponds built and finished properly what i don't want is rainwater coming in washing through the ponds effectively rinsing the ponds out and taking all that amazing nutrient rich water and just having it washed away somewhere we don't need it like through our chicken beds which are directly downhill. So what I want to do is build a little irrigation system underground with some drainage that effectively catches that water in a swale and feeds it down the back of our annual vegetable garden because that's somewhere that the nutrients are definitely going to be appreciated. So, so these are all things to put in place in the long term. So the next little heading is wildlife and here it's not just everything you see but that's very important, but it's all the things that you can see evidence of and just any other notes that come to mind under this category. Squirrels, evidence of rabbit, deer seen in the neighboring pasture. We've seen deer in there. We've actually seen deer right here before and they just jump freely over this fence. Buzzards, magpies, crows, dragonflies and miscellaneous water creatures because even though our ponds aren't complete, they do hold a little bit of water. So they are already developing some nice habitats for amphibians and things like that. Resources, now here's a really important one. What resources do you have in this area, whatever area it is you're looking at? And they could be anything, absolutely anything. Here we've put sun, ponds, 
compost loo, woodland, partial fencing, shade, and ducks. At the time, we actually had some ducks. So there, these are all resources, things that you can extract value from and use. Next up we had was problems, just a list of problems in this area. And I put pests and soil drainage question mark. Well, as it happens, I'm ready to basically compile a second version of this list, which will be tagged to this one and just to update it. And I'm going to take away soil drainage because although it doesn't drain very, very freely, it's not a problem in this area. We don't have any problem with standing water or this ground getting particularly boggy. And we've been through quite some extreme weather while we've been here. So I think that I can cross that one off the list. Penultimately, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So strengths, peace, fertility, and the sunshade mix. These are all strengths of this area. In terms of using it for a picnic site, it is incredibly peaceful. In terms of the fertility, we're talking about really the fact that the soil has been undisturbed for such a long time. So I'm banking on the soil food web being really vibrant here. And then the sun and shade mix is again, another strength. Weaknesses, and we've got pests and predators. So the reason we don't have ducks here anymore is because that weakness showed itself and we actually had predators come and take our ducks. So that was definitely correct and pests. And we know about that and we're keeping on top of it. And that's why we've now got all these tree guards around all of our trees because of all the pests. Opportunities. So we've got opportunities here to create some lovely strong guilds because we've got the space to do so and we've got a free reign with what we do with this area. We're gonna create some nice guilds around these plants up behind me and that's eventually going to become the food forest and another thing i've listed in opportunities is edible pond permaculture that's obviously a huge part of what i want to achieve here threats we've got water logging and we've got fox badger and heron water logging i'm going to actually remove that as a threat now because i don't think it is a threat to this area i think we're okay the other ones are definitely real, fox, badger, and heron. So the fox we know is a threat here, badger the same, and heron is gonna be a threat to our ponds when we stock with fish. So that's one we can actually manage a little bit easier than the others. And then finally, the last thing on my list here is desirable goals. So the desirable goals for me in this area, having compiled that list, and this is going back a year and a half, is continued introduction of edible plants, create a safe duck habitat, create edible pond permacultures, planting of edibles between ponds, pump waters from pond one to three because, oh sorry, pond three to one, because again, I've set three ponds up here at different levels. So the idea will be that we'll be able to pump from the lowest pond to the top one and create an aquaculture system. Now, I did actually have that up and running and all working. We got a, or rather I was gifted a, a solar powered pump for my birthday and that was all working before. I don't know if you know the story of the pond, but basically we had a goose who had rather aggressive claws and just tore up all the linings. So we're going to rebuild it using masonry basically. Um, we're gonna line it with a very thin layer of mortar and stones. So that's the goal now. But um, when that's up and running and the pond's all finally built again, then we're gonna have the, um, the solar powered pump to create that pump so that you'll have fish and possibly ducks using the top pond, the biggest pond. And then the waste products from those animals will go into the water and create nutrients, which will then feed the second pond, which is gonna be growing edible plants. And then that's just fed gravity fed from the first pond and then from the second pond it'll be again gravity fed to the third pond which will be growing a different selection of edible plants and also possibly one of the second two ponds we'll use to grow duckweed which is going to be feed for some of our birds including the, the ducks obviously and then from that third pond the plants will have filtered that water made it much cleaner and then it'll be pumped back into the top pond for the fish again so it's it's, it's permaculture in a nutshell right there. The next thing under our desirable goals is to introduce irrigation. So as I said, 
uh, a little while ago. What I want is for the third pond to have an overflow system that then irrigates down to the back of our vegetable bed because anything that does come out is going to contain valuable nutrients. We don't want to waste them. So when we have rainfall, when the ponds are already full and we get rainfall, the top pond will go down into the second pond, into the third pond and then overflow and then eventually just feed out the back of our vegetable bed. And then the final thing uh, under desirable goals is protect some of our crops from wildlife. Now, I've actually achieved a lot of those goals. We've been moving slowly in the right direction, which is exactly the right pace. I'm really happy with that, actually. So that's our garden activity, our downtime garden activity that I think you should all do. It's an incredibly valuable exercise. I find it an incredibly valuable exercise because it's really easy to just walk up to a space and say, right, I wanna do this, I wanna do that. And then six months later, a year later, think, oh, that didn't, that didn't really work. This really helps to protect you against a lot of those problems that you might make. It's a good way of forcing you to take your time because you want to sit down really in this space for a good hour and compose this list over that time. And it's surprising how just having things worded this way, things like the, uh, if you're at business school, you'd call it a SWOT analysis, the bit where it just lists strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It forces you to think things through slightly differently. And, you know, I've put everything in a very specific order. The reason that that's near the end is because it's allowed time for these other thoughts to percolate. And so when I really come to analyze what my goals are, it helps to really frame everything nicely. So like I say, if you would like a copy of this, send me an email. I'm gonna spend the next few days um, interspersed with my usual videos. I'm gonna spend a lot of time going through all of my garden planning. This is just the start. There's so much more I have in here to share with you and some really, really useful tips and ideas. So I hope you found that useful. If you have, then please let me know. Please let me know also if you think there's anything missing from my list, um, because I'm looking to learn as well. You know, I very much would like any ideas for things to go on this list so I can improve it. So let me know in the comments and if there's anything else that you'd like to hear about how I'm doing my garden planning then let me know that as well and if you find these videos valuable please do subscribe to our channel there's lots more videos just like this one coming up in the next few days and the easiest way to make sure you don't miss them is to subscribe press that like button leave a comment down below and I will speak to you very soon